Hello and welcome to the Pride of India show. Our guest today is Aditya Bagri, Director of Bagri Group, India's leading breakfast cereal brand. Aditya is striving to take the three-year-old company to the next level. Welcome to the show, Aditya. Thank you so much, Kanchan. Thank you so much for having me on the show on the platform. Aditya, please take us through the initial journey of uh, Bagri's. So, uh, so Bagri's, you know, was a business that started out of pure passion. So, as as a food processing group, we've been in the business of grain milling and food processing for over fifty years. Uh, the family has been involved um, uh, for many years in in this in the space of flour milling and grain milling, and and that's the origin of our journey, you know, with food processing. So, my father, who started our immediate group, was someone who uh, started his entrepreneurial journey at a very early age. He set up his first flour mill units at the age of uh, age of nineteen. And uh, got involved in the business very very early, and uh, subsequently built a successful B two B business where we were giving tailor made ingredients out to beat to various multinational companies. And once he established that, he was very passionate to put something of his own on the shelf. And he was also cognizant of the fact that flour milling was predominantly selling maida, which is you know as we all know is unhealthy. And Mahatma Gandhi spoke very uh, strongly on the nutritive values of the outer layer of the beef cream, which is the bran. So he wanted to do something with bran and and try and make it fit for human consumption because it always went as as cattle feed because it was unstable. So with a lot of experiments, he was able to you know uh, stabilize wheat bran, and that was the first retail product. And the idea wasn't to build a modern day pure consumer startup as as we see today. The idea was to put something very honest and and something that we were very passionate about around nutrition on the shelf, and and eventually build out something which um. Which we can all be proud of. So the early days of the journey was pure passion. Uh, we did not view it from a business lens. We started with products like uh, wheat, uh, wheat bran, and when we sold it to consumers, consumers wrote back to us saying that you know it actually made a difference to their lives. So whether you know it helped them lose weight or get their digestion in order, or they felt a lot better, uh, and and those responses were very heartwarming. And that was really our uh, motivation to continue innovating. So we started, uh, you know, innovating by creating categories such as oats and newsly, introducing them in India at a time that you didn't have access to the internet or or the kind of supply chains that exist today. And so we managed to do it fairly indigenously and um, and kept on innovating. We were the first people to actually launch nutrition bars in the country, also back in '98, which is a category which was way before time. So. The idea was to keep on innovating to try and build something which is healthy, uh, way ahead of its time. Whether it's worked in the West, whether it's you know something that is required for the Indian consumer, we put it in a palette where it is acceptable to an Indian consumer. And in the early two thousands, we you know pivoted from what was our passion to a proper FMCG business, dedicated the right team for it. Um, Made sure that we expand capacities, put up a state-of-the-art facility in Marchal, which you know does most of our breakfast cereals, and and eventually put a FMCG lens to it. And the B two B business exists, and the FMCG business, which is the vertical that I look after, is a pure play consumer business right now. And over the years, we've done many innovations. And the idea was to always challenge the status quo of what we believe is right for a category, and uh, and put it out to our consumers. And, and and fortunately, we've built decades of trust, you know, in the brand, and that's what consumers have valued: the trust, the quality, and in fact, it's largely perceived to be an international brand because of the quality and the, and, and the kind of work we've done in the category. So, you know, very exciting journey so far, and you know, very exciting times ahead as well. Mm-hmm. Over the years, how did you connect with your consumers? I mean, word of mouth, supply chain innovations, and advertisements. Yes, yes. So the initial years, I would say the early couple of decades was more of you know the first two points that you mentioned, uh, predominantly word of mouth. So I think there's lots of you know effort on putting the product on the shelf. Consumers tried it. Uh, they liked it. They referred it to other people. We reached out to uh, the influencers of the '90s, which included uh, nutritionists and doctors, in a physical manner. Uh, gave them a lot of reading material, a lot of literature uh, that was created, which included technical papers to explain the health benefits. So, um, and and we also participated in a lot of events. So, you know, be it a heart event in in Delhi or or another event in Bombay or. Trade fairs. So I think the idea was that at that point of time in the nineties, the opportunities to market, you know, beyond mass media were limited. And since we were starting out, we we 
we looked at every retail opportunity which we could do. We sampled the product. So there was lots of below the line, line outreach that we did. But predominantly, I would say the, the largest equity we got was by creating a sincere and honest product which consumers tried and they referred it to other people and it grew organically, you know, by word of mouth from person to person to shelf to shelf. And it was a very slow, gradual increase that, that we saw. The other big innovations we did was, uh, you know, one of the key innovations in supply chain, which we did was packaging. So, which I think we are extremely proud of. So oats globally and breakfast cereal globally is sold in the form of either pouches or boxes. And we were the first people, the best to our knowledge, to introduce oats in a pet jar which turned out to be a game changer. So we got pet jars from a brand which was very popular in the 90s, uh, 90s called Pearl Pet. And instead of putting it in tins, we packed the oats in a pet jar. That itself became such a, such a motivator for um, you know uh, homemakers to actually try and uh, consume the oats because they got a Pearl Pet pet jar free along with it. That it completely pivoted the initial trial generation process. And once obviously people got into the habit of consuming oats, it was a regular repeat process. But globally, I think we were one of the first few brands to adopt to uh, to actually putting uh, cereal in a jar. And that's an innovation that that I'm proud to say that lots of our colleagues, which are multinationals, followed when they entered India. Whereas, uh, and, and it's gone beyond India as well. So that's something we did on the supply chain side. And and obviously, as as things evolved, we had also done print. We also did uh, lots of PR outreach to try and reach out to the right influences. The market was still very small to do mass media at that stage. And even the supply chain was limited. So most of our effort was actually below the line at the point of sale to try and sample the product out, make people, uh, you know, try the habit. Because I would also try and explain, you know, what made Barbaries unique, which was, um, you know, why would you have oats? Why would you have trees? The categories that we were pioneering in, and today when you go to a shelf, they're very distinct categories in our know, as retail. So earlier it used to be all clubbed in one small breakfast cereal. Aisle. So I think I think as things have evolved, our approach has been constantly changing. Today to acquire a customer, it's very different. You know, you go right from digital advertising to uh, again, the point of sale, uh, you know, kind of works. So some of the some of the basics don't change, which is point of sale and sampling. But obviously, the the other mediums of you know where consumers are understanding what your brand is is evolving constantly. But the early days was all supply chain, all below the line work to to try and build it. And uh, and I think you know that was very exciting. And it's 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 also a patient exercise. It doesn't happen overnight because you have to acquire each customer at a time. Can you please tell us about your most popular campaigns, you know, in recent years and which ad agency do you work with? So a lot of the creative throughput that we have is actually now in-house. So we have, you know, designers and creatives in-house. So we are working with specialized agencies uh, for packaging, for influencer marketing, for, uh, for, uh, for media buying. But majority of the creative creative input is now through our in-house marketing team. And that's, that's where a lot of modern day, uh, you know, uh, brands are evolving, which have significant amount of presence on digital because the sheer amount of output that you need to generate is uh, is uh, is significant. But from every campaign, we've worked with different agencies, all, you know, thorough professionals. We've got a board which has some very seasoned FMCG people on top who worked on much larger campaigns than, you know, what, uh, uh, and, and at much larger scales. So I'm grateful to have their input on, you know, whatever work we're doing in terms of communication as well. But, uh, uh, just to give an example, uh, some of the more uh, some of the more recent campaigns we've done, you know, a campaign on Newsly uh, 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 back in 2017, which was uh, the first time that we went with uh, the whole outdoor cab advertising media, along with print and along with airlines. We'd taken, we'd put a product on Indigo Airlines. We'd actually, you know, put um, uh, put our Newsly branding all over uh, the Meru and Ola cabs, and that actually took off fairly well. So that was a campaign we'd done um, with a boutique agency, uh, which uh, which has some senior creators and, and that was received very well. And the idea was to actually generate awareness around the industry category. And since then, the category has you know, taken off uh, quite significantly. And in more recent times, most of the work which, we, which we've been doing has been very digital, very point of sale oriented. So it might be on a certain e-commerce platform, whether we're putting in communication or on um, you know, platforms such as Google and Facebook, but they have become micro campaigns because the refresh rate is so uh, so high that we have to change creatives every 10 or 15 days. And that's, you know, that's what consumer acquisitions come to. But from a pure, you know, brand generation piece, that was 
um, uh, uh, and that was quite well received. And, and the only TVC we've done is in the state of South in Kerala, where we actually did an oats campaign quite some time back, where we did that in Malayalam. So we have the only time that we've gone mass media and done TV is in a market which you know was very well penetrated for us, which was Kerala. And, and we did a Malayalam TVC. Uh, what was exciting for us was that it was a very high quality campaign done with a great production team at a shoestring budget. But um, the campaign's resonance is still there today. The fact that, you know, people recognize that TVC, even though it's been a decade, is, is something that, you know, we value quite a bit. And and now, obviously, the brand is also evolved. Our approach is also evolved. So I think future campaigns, which we're seeing, are very different from, you know, what we do in the past. And, and now the confines of above the line and below the line have merged a bit. And it's all about acquiring a customer and, and customer lifetime value and the kind of data points that are available to us right now uh, vis-a-vis what we could see earlier in terms of offline and mass media are very different. So I think the approach has become a lot more scientific and the idea is now to actually create a whole range of new products and, and, and educate consumers and get new consumers to try us because we sincerely believe we make a good product. Consumers who try us often come back to us um, and there's a very high repeat rate. So we're focusing on, you know, new customer acquisition in a way that is sustained. And uh, and for that, I think uh, point of sale is again very important, which which we're dialing up now that the pandemic's, you know, settled. Uh, um, digital awareness is very important on e-com platforms, which again, we're dialing up. So today, if you open a platform like Blinkit, you will probably see communication from Barclays, you know, across various categories. So we're very, very clear about, you know, where we'd want to acquire our customers. And many of them can choose to buy the product on online first, but they might you know, go back to offline to purchase it. So, so that's that's what we're going with. How much is your ad expenditure, ad expenditure today compared to what it was before pandemic? So today it's actually, I mean, um, uh, without sharing absolute numbers, I would say because before the pandemic, we'd hardly spent you know, money on advertising in a consistent way. So today, I would say it's at least about five to six times more than what it was before the pandemic. That's also because we are looking at digital as a medium far more strongly and consistently. Whereas earlier, it was you know time to time awareness based campaign in which you'd spend on advertising and most of your budget would go below the line on trade and you know other activations. So uh, so so it's actually dialed up fairly significantly. And I think our advertising expenditure would be about five to six times of what it was pre-pandemic in terms of what we were spending on a regular basis. And uh, we're looking to spend, you know, um, uh, a fairly consistent amount going forward as well. So I'm more excited about what we're going to do rather than, you know, what we've done so far as well as far as advertising is concerned. Because there's lots of innovations that we've come up with over recent years, which we want to communicate about. Mm-hmm. Who do you see as your biggest competitor? And do you feel that you are making a dent in their revenues? So overall, I'd say that, you know, um, our journey is unique. So firstly, we are not the organization which would say that X, Y, Z are our competitors, the competitors, and, you know, we need to, you know, work um, on on um, on um, making a dent in their revenues. We are here to grow our revenues and more importantly, grow our customer base. And again, it's a business built out of passion. So we have a longer term vision to build one of India's most trusted health food brands. And in order to do that, our vision to you know, so doesn't stop at breakfast cereals. We are a boutique oats and muesli brand today. We are a complete breakfast cereal brand. And going forward, we want to be a complete health foods play. So from that perspective, we are trying to craft our own unique journey because every product in Barclays is highly differentiated on, you know, health and nutrition. So even, say, for example, something as simple as the cornflakes we make is very innovative in comparison to, you know, what the average is in the market. So I think from that point of view, we are very uniquely positioned. But of course, we are operating in a category which is a breakfast cereals, which is dominated by a handful of multinationals and large Indian companies. Uh, so, so, uh, so you know, we do um, have to operate in that, ensure that we are taking uh, you know our due measures to to uh, to get the right sort of category share that that we deserve. And I think we've been the largest homegrown brand you know, in the space. So from that perspective, I'm sure, you know, that that I don't know if you're making a dent in their revenues, but I'm sure that, you know, it's um, it's something that uh, uh, that is taking notice. But our journey is still a long way to go. So so we're just getting started in terms of what we'd want to achieve with the brand. And uh, from that perspective, early responses on, you know, how we've started tracking category share, how we started tracking growth has been very encouraging. And um, 
and as we expand our portfolio as we've gone into more and more categories i'm sure uh, you know we are, we are one of the only brands which has the pan india footprint as well as uh, a complete play in all breakfast cereal categories which includes muesli and oats categories that we've pioneered as well as kid cereals and corn flakes which are categories that we've created something different and uh, from that perspective we have a complete bouquet of breakfast cereals so very few brands have that and more importantly in an innovative manner and not you know just me too so from that point of view we've um, been very very clear that you know we want to grow in the category we want to grow beyond the category also and today we have got products which are talking more about general health and wellness or specific health and wellness which um, get us into avenues of healthy snacking healthy superfoods which go way beyond breakfast and into almost uh, a crossover between nutrition and food so 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 a lot of what we're doing now is uh, you know very research driven very uh, opportunity driven and doesn't just stop at breakfast because we realize that consumers are having our products beyond breakfast as well so there's acceptance for the brand as not a breakfast cereal brand consumers are viewing us as health first and that's what our motto has been you know for 20 years our tagline has been let's put health first so you know we've gone with it and, and tried to create a you know truly honest health food brand you spoke about various products in categories what are your long term plans so from a longer term plan like i had mentioned our vision is to build india's most trusted brand for health so we want to take this brand um, we started out with a boutique play of oats and muesli we made it into a complete breakfast cereal um, brand we are consolidating and there are lots of innovations that we planned in breakfast cereals to give example we recently launched canola which is a very well accepted uh, you know product very high quality product with uh, uh, with one flavor being belgian dark chocolate and almonds and the other one being exotic fruits fruits and nuts with a very high quantum of fruits and nuts in it um, in our core categories such as muesli we were actually the uh, innovators to bring out uh, india's first protein based muesli so whey protein muesli we were the first people to actually use whey protein with breakfast cereal which uh, which globally very few brands had you know attempted till then so that was an innovation that we did and we were quite proud of um one innovation we did in the cornflakes space i think has also been one of those global first where we identified that cornflakes are not healthy they are actually not good for you in terms of nutrition from a fiber and a glycemic index standpoint they give you a blood sugar spike you know whenever you have cornflakes and in order to address that we actually infuse fiber into the flake with the form of prebiotic fibers which reduce the gi of the cornflake and we actually uh, managed to stabilize the flake without adding any artificial antioxidants so most brands actually had bha which is ins320 which is an artificial antioxidant we managed to stabilize it with natural antioxidants yet give consumers a taste experience which is um, you know almost identical to what uh, their regular conflicts are and they're used to so that's a category where we've taken significant share at least in the organized medium and, and we're just i would say getting started there so that that's been exciting we managed to create a kids range also recently where most of the kids cereals today have had a combination of maida and you know very high quantum of flavors and sugars so a completely natural kids cereal uh, with with 0% maida and made with three grains of oats wheat and rice and um, and nothing artificial at all so a much better alternative but for the for the child the, the taste experience is is you know very satisfying so we've not compromised in the taste but we've significantly dialed up the health so that was an innovation again that was you know very exciting and and obviously from a extension of the health food range we've uh, in the healthy snacking segment we've launched flavored makhanas which has been uh, very well received we were one of the early brands to do it and we've stuck to our guns that we want to do a high quality flavored makhana because the market was pro- pro- uh, pro- uh, proliferated with you know a bunch of players but we want to keep our quality consistent and we rode out that storm of uh, you know having so many players on the shelf but And that's been well accepted then we've gone into uh, healthy superfoods in the form of organic quinoa chia um, a whole range of seeds such as sunflower flax watermelon um, we've also ex- explored the nut butters category because it's an extension of breakfast into breakfast spreads so we've got you know peanut butter which is without any added sugar or or artificial uh, stabilizers and pure peanut butter of a very high grade of peanut and we've actually Uh, just before the pandemic we worked on a category called apple cider vinegar which is a healthy tonic so our first foray into the almost new to suitable segment where it's it's something that you can consume you know when you wake up first thing in the morning so there's a very strong connect to the brand from a health standpoint and that was extremely well received because it has immunity boosting benefits so 
you know, as soon as the pandemic hit, we saw that Apple side of Vinegar wasn't just moving from online shelves, it started moving from rural, rural shelves as well. And, and that's something that, you know, we, we worked on uh, very well and, uh, and we kept it in a glass bottle, which was the right way in, in our approach to you know, store it. So lots of innovations and lots more in store, actually, um, that we're working on in categories uh, where we are trying to do something different and, and innovate. So now we're eyeing larger categories where we can take a small niche share but it has to be innovative. It, it, it doesn't need to be a me too in terms of what we do because our core brand pillars are just health, very high quality manufacturing, innovation in terms of you know doing something disruptive in the category and years of consumer trust, which puts us in a very different light than say a modern day startup or a large multinational for that matter. But the approach is to always you know do it clean do it with the consumer's health first when we develop a product we don't think of whether it makes commercial sense we think of whether it's the best product we can make and then we figure out if we can make it commercially viable so that approach is always in our in, in my view personally you know the recipe to create winner products mm -hmm. thanks for talking with us aditya thank you very much okay, thank you so much kanchan thank you so much for having me on the show and and we look forward to interacting with you